which I'm calling HB2. And this is the right fore, the right front foot. Now this horse had chronic laminitis over many, many years. And I think you can see quite clearly that there are lots and lots of event lines in the hoof wall. I think I can also see the appearance of possibly a laminar wedge through the front here, which is that wedge of tissue which develops at the very toe area and around the sides here. But what was so really strange about this foot is the shape of it. I don't know if you can actually see in the video, it looks so very different to what I would say a normal foot would look like. So the front of it is a reasonable angle through here. But when I look at this part here, it's almost as if a whole piece has been scooped out. And you can see that it's lifting right up into the coronet area around here. And this is scooped in. If I put it like that, you can actually see how scooped this is. And there's a hard ring of hoof wall tissue around here, which is like a line around this area here, and it's going around to the back. So I thought that that was really quite bizarre, and I've never seen anything look like that before. And if you look, there's almost like a point here between this part of the hoof wall and this part at that point there. And if you also look the way I've put the, the foot down, the rings are coming round, the event lines, and then they're going up and down. Can you see that? And they are mimicking this upward movement or this position up here. Now I suppose my question will be, is, is this the normal and that this is all sunk or has this risen up? You know, what, what is happening here? Why is that so sunken through there? Let's have a look at the other side, which yes, there's plenty of event lines there. We don't have that sucked in appearance that we had on the other side. So if this is the right four, then that means that this is the medial side. So this is the inside, this is the outside. Now this horse was chronically laminitic. She could hardly walk. So I don't know whether the changes in the hoof, the appearance of this, of this hoof wall is due to posture and movement. I don't know if that's got anything to do with it, but she was literally just stumbling around and incredibly laminitic looking on the video that the owner sent to me. Now, what is also interesting is, can you see how the sole is literally hanging down underneath here? You can see it's really quite low through here. So if you look, if you look at this part here, you can see that the sole is dropping down quite markedly underneath the hoof wall. This seems to almost be like lifting up. Now, this looks like the mark of the trimmer with the trim lines, the rasp lines through here. This almost looks polished around here. So I don't know whether that's trim or whether that's the movement of the horse, which I would have thought was pretty unlikely. But look how much this is hanging out down the bottom, the, the sole literally coming out down there. So I don't know whether the trimmer actually took this back and left this hanging below the, the wall line, or whether the trimmer had this sole with the wall and then it's dropped down in time. So that's, that's a question I need to ask the owner. But that's quite a, a shocking look, looking foot, isn't it, from this side. And if we turn this around, you can see still that there's the trim through here. So most of the trim seems to have been concentrated on the toe. And I would think that that was to try and reduce the break over so that the foot can, as the foot comes down and then lifts off the ground, it hasn't got all this extra toe in the front, which is going to cause issues inside the foot and, and forces inside the foot, like wearing clown shoes. If you've got shoes that are very, very long, they're incredibly hard to walk in, aren't they? Let's have a look at the sole. Oh my goodness. All right. Whew. It's quite shocking, isn't it, really, to see something like this. And I've given this a really good scrub 
there is still a little bit of debris in here but first of all look at this part through here it looks like there is a cavern in the sole and this is like it, it looks like cotton wool and it's got little fibers on it so I'm wondering if this was maybe an abscess that burst underneath here and the trimmer or the owner has plugged up that hole with cotton wool and treatment. Now it's it's really quite deep in there and I couldn't get it out even though this foot had defrosted. So part of me was wondering whether the actual sole was starting to grow into this piece of cotton wool. But clearly we've got something quite nasty going on around this area. And if you actually have a look at the sole around here where we could see it was poking out at the toe area, we've got this strange looking appearance just here. Now the actual foot looks quite yellow and I often see yellow looking feet when we've got trauma like this, laminitis or a horse that died of colic had very yellow feet and I, I quite wonder whether this yellowness is something to do with inflammation it's just my own thoughts really because I do see it quite a bit and there does seem to be some I wouldn't like to say correlation but some very small link between yellow feet and issues systemically within the body meaning something going on within the body rather than something going on within the foot. Now, interestingly, the color of the sole, can you see we've got sole pigment around here, quite a bit around this side here and hardly anything here. Little bit of pigment up here. Now, the sole pigment is another story that I, I'm quite interested in because some trimmers have said that all feet should have a slate colored sole, which is this color here. And that a foot that is unhealthy is like this, which is white. Now I'm not really sure about that because I think that the color is only produced by melanin cells. So melanin, if you think about your freckles, then they are colored like that because of melanin in your skin. People with very dark skin have a lot of melanin. People with very light skin don't have so much. So this is literally just a colour which is being produced by cells, probably in the corium. The corium is the area that actually create, well, creates the cells, looks after the cells that are being created in the soul. It's a bed of beautiful tissue and blood vessels, lymphatic vessels to feed the soul. But it's interesting that it's all like over this side here and we seem to have this part like going off to one side. That's almost what it looks like. It almost looks like a stress pushing over around here. Now the wall itself, there's a lot of separation. I can't even see the white line here. My probe can go all the way around. I can't go too deep because this foot is still frozen, but we've got a lot of separation through here. And it's almost as if the whole sole feels as though it's almost not attached to the 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 wall that that's how it, it feels like to me like the whole thing feels like it's all coming forward towards me and then when we look at the frog it's quite a damaged frog but again it's got that same sort of look like it's windswept coming over this way here can you see the way it's pointing and pointing here and then we've got the colour around here. So I'm just wondering if there's something further up the, the body or up the leg, which is pushing weight over this side and is causing all these distorted looking structures coming across. Now, I'm pretty sure that all of this is going to be due to the coughing bone or the distal phalanx in here, the last bone in the foot, which I think is going to be quite rotated. It's going to be quite bent down away from the hoof wall. And I'm pretty sure that if we had a radiograph taken from the front to the back, we might see that the, the distal phalanx is pressing more on this side, is closer to the ground this side than this side. And I think I'd like to get some radiographs on this foot because I think it would be quite useful 
to have those before I start slicing into it. Now there is a little bit of redness through here and I'm not 100% sure whether it is artifact when the feet were removed from the deceased horse or whether it is actually staining, haemoglobin staining coming from injury deeper within the foot. Not sure about that yet. Now I'm just looking at it from the, the, the rear side and I'm looking at well, I suppose looking to see how what the balance is on this foot. I mean, it is such a terribly sad foot. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a trim and I'm not a farrier, but that looks pretty flat to me. Maybe a little bit could come off there, but gosh, I think that's the least of this horse's worries. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what it looked like from the rear portion. Quite a bit of frog is coming away there that's probably thrush damage or it could just be that the frog wants to exfoliate uh, my plans for this foot and for the other three feet is that i'm going to study this foot with professor pollitt who is a very experienced researcher in laminitis of the equine foot and he's been researching laminitis for over 30 years he lives in Australia and he's currently a lecturer at the University of Queensland. So I'm hoping that he's going to explain to me why this is so scooped in here. Never seen it before. And I wonder what's actually causing the scoop. I'm hoping he's going to be able to explain to me why we've got this area around here. And I think it's going to be due to the distal phalanx is tipping down, is pressing on this area around here. And it's basically, it's destroying the sole. It's just, it's got nothing to hold it up and it's just pushing down relentlessly on the inner sole. And this is probably an abscess at that point. Now, with laminitis, you do get a lot of abscesses. They seem to go hand in hand and Professor Pollitt explains that what happens is, is the, the distal phalanx or the coughing bone, because it basically gets destroyed during laminitis, the, the bone gets lysed. It's, it's a lysis process and there are osteoclasts which break down. They're cells that actually break down the bone and those little parts of breakage or the, or the the products of the breakage and even little parts of bone that will literally get broken off because the bone around the perimeter of the distal phalanx is so very thin that little pieces just break off and then the body then tries to deal with that by covering it and creating what's known as an abscess. Now we, I always think abscesses are due to bacteria that have got in the foot and uh, they're like an infectious type abscess, but you can get abscesses with anything really, where the body is trying to encapsulate that foreign body or that thing it doesn't want there. It tries to encapsulate it to stop it causing problems. So I'm really looking forward to looking inside this foot with Professor Pollitt. It's, I think it's going to reveal a lot of secrets to me and to you. And I think we're going to learn such a lot.